Hello, welcome to another John Schwann production. Uh, this will be the front nine of the opening round of the grand opening of Echo Valley. Uh, it's been 14 years, I think, in the running. I think I first came out here in 2011 and played it. Um, on today's card, we have Jeremiah Kraus uh, coming out of Dayton, Ohio. We have Ian Collins coming out of Cincinnati, uh, Middletown. We got Cyrus Furman coming out of Cincinnati as well. And then I have with me in the booth today, Bart Kovaleski, who's also on the card. How are we doing today, Bart? I'm good. Uh, it should be a fun round. Um, I'm excited to rewatch this round. Uh, Echo Valley is a really awesome course. Thank you to everybody who was involved in making this a permanent course. Um, it's pretty challenging, one of the better courses in the Dayton area, so it's going to add some variety to some of the courses that we already have here. And here's a look at the map layout right in front of us. A big shout out to Carl Childs, doing a lot of work in the last probably 20 years in Dayton. So we got hole one here coming in at 576 feet. It's a par four. You gonna walk it, walk it through with us, Mark? Sure. Um, the tee shot is is fairly open. Um, you want to just rip one into the field. You can see the tree on the left side, kind of all the way down there. You just want to be to the right of that tree. You don't want to turn it over too much or go right too much because your angle going into the tunnel where the basket sits might be a little cut off. Looks like we had a pretty good drive by Ian there. And Cyrus Furman here. Looks like he got it a little bit low. Yeah, it just kind of came out of his hand. What are we throwing here, Bart? Uh, I believe that I'm throwing a DD3. We have a slight headwind, so I picked one of my more stable DD3s. Looks like you got on that one. Full shape, nice flight. Should leave you a pretty good approach to the basket. Yep, pretty happy with that. Should. Yep. And last we got Jeremiah. I'm assuming he's throwing some kind of destroyer here. I think he throws Scorpius. Either that or he's bagging a new uh, Sabo. Okay. That he got off Barnhill. So that I might be a, a Scorpius. I think we got uh, yep, Cyrus up here looking at straight at the basket. Now there's a little trouble behind the green. Oh, nice Cyrus got a nice kick there. Yeah, from where he was at, that's a really, really nice second shot. Probably about 300 feet, you know, into the tunnel. So yeah. not how you want to start off your tee shot, but good recovery. Jeremiah's going with a little baby turn over here. I bet that would be one of his JKs. Also nice approach right under the basket, just how you want it. Uh, this would be Ian's probably famous quake. He's always forehanding these in and around the basket. And yeah, nice height control there. The thing is with this tunnel, you don't want to be too high because you can see those dead kind of branches. Um, they can snag your disc or knock you down and you'll have like a 40 or 50 footer. What'd you throw here? I'm just trying to baby a FD3 to get that little kind of skip by the basket. Looks like some nice touch. Oh, we got Cyrus, probably 15, 20 feet. Just right about there. Oh. Yeah, just, just not, not the putt that you want, you know, first, uh, first hole of the round. Maybe rushed a little bit, I don't know, but wasn't able to convert there. How far is this, Bart? Uh, this is probably about 25 feet. Uphill. Yeah. That's a good putt. Yeah, happy, good. happy good. with that one. Good way to get your round started. Start off with a birdie. Yeah. And Jerry's about the same spot. There you go. That's a good putt. Yeah, you definitely want to get this first hole to get your round started. Kind of build you up. Because there's some tricky holes coming up. Probably one of the easiest holes according to par. Uh, on the course. I would definitely agree with that. We should. So three birdies on the card and uh, one par. It's a pretty good start. Yep. Let's see. Uh, 
shout out to the Jimmy Cold Iron, an old face on the uh, disc golf scene. Rest in peace, Jimmy. Yep. Looks like the majority of the field got the birdie. Uh, hole two, like I was saying, 298 feet. It's pretty much a straight shot. You gotta hit the gap and glide out. There's a little trouble down the hill. There's a walking path that plays out of bounds, but shouldn't come into play. A technical straight shot. And you see Ian going with the forehand here. A little turnover. That should leave him about 60 feet out. Yeah, look a little short. I'm throwing an MD3 here, trying to flip it up. But a little early release there. Just wanted to get it around that tree and it would have been good. Yeah, those two trees pinch right there. Making it a tough. Looks like Jerry got over on a rock. It's floating his way down. If he can get lucky through those trees if you turn something over, it can get about pin high and you'll have you'll have a putt. And then we got Cyrus. Pretty sure that's a claymore, I think. I think so. Yeah, that's a really nice, really nice shot. Good line. The intended line that you want to throw here and I'll be up first here just trying to get my approach close to the basket it's a little touchy right behind the basket like I said it goes downhill it can run away pretty quick looks like he turned that over just a little bit there Bart yep didn't, uh, didn't get uh, confident on that one didn't hit the line I really wanted to and Ian's got about a 35 to 40 footer yeah it's like as, as you can see that uh Green runs away pretty quick. It was probably a smart move there. Got Jerry looking at probably about, you know, I've also 40 feet, but an obstructed putt. And he's definitely got to contend with some branches and trees there. Oh, looks like he caught a root after the drive. Kind of kept him close. This looks a little tricky here, Bart, for your par. Yep, this is from about third circle's edge. And I have this little branch that I'm just trying to pitch over, get up and down with the with the putt. That's a great nice. putt. Dead center, oh good my. speed. Wasn't going anywhere if you missed it. That's pretty, a great save. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Did not want to bogey this hole to start my round off. We got four more. Ooh, Jerry, just getting in over the rim. I will say that these baskets are about uh, six inches higher than normal regulation, I would say. The collars are kind of out. He adds a little uh, difficulty to the basket. Makes you really commit to your putts. Yep, makes you think about it. There's Cyrus getting it in. There's a, a good birdie. Makes up for the, the little miss there on hole one. And Ian's also going to tap out his three there. So only one birdie on, on this hole. Pretty surprising. I actually think that hole plays harder than you think. Probably like four or five birdies, maybe. Yep. Let's see. And then we're going to move on. Oh, yeah, before we move on, thank you to Six Sided Discs for the sponsorship on that hole. Yeah, played 2.86, only five birdies on the day. Looks like maybe one or two bogeys. Not really too much trouble to be had on that hole. Yep. We got hole three here coming in 469, par three. This could be one of the toughest holes on the course. There's Tony, wild Tony spotting. <laughs> He's saying, I got this hole. And, yeah, like Tony said, this is probably going to be one of the hardest holes on the course, according to par at least, because there's probably not going to be any twos. And here you see Cyrus with a really nice-looking forehand. It's still going to be tough from there. He's a ways back to get around that corner. It's going to take another great shot. You really, Yeah, you really want to push the, the left side of the fairway to kind of open up the approach to the basket. Another forehand. That big rock is kind of your landing zone. You want to push it just past that big rock. So we got Bart here going backhand, changing the play. And yeah, I just turned that one over a little too much. I wouldn't say I even turned it over too much. I just released it late, did not hit my line. Jerry is also going with the backhand, got it flexing. And it looks like it caught some debris and just came down. It's gonna be a tight approach. Bart's way back here. What we got, Bart? About 350? Yeah, there's almost no way to get to the basket here, so I'm just trying to pitch out to where you really want your drive to land. Yeah, that's a that's a great shot. That should be a, a 60 footer for three. Yep. Got Ian going forehand again, getting through. That's a great shot, but he yep. caught those late trees. Yep, he'll have a look there for, 
for three. Cyrus, there's this little back door, um, but it's it's very, very tight, and you, you, it's a specific spot you have to be if you want to throw there. You can see both these guys are throwing it, and it's not as easy as it looks. Jeremiah caught the trees. Looks like he's going to be in the rough there for his par. Bart from 60, uh, maybe a little longer than 60. Looks like he put some juice on that one to get up there. Yep, just taking my four. There's no way I was going to save a three from where I was at after my drive. And Jerry pitching out here, doing the same. And you can really see why this, why this hole is so tough. The drive is really crucial. If you can nail the drive, the, the three is, is very much in play. But if you can't, then it's difficult to save your three. Oh, yeah. Ian's par bid right there. Looks like we got Cyrus. At 20, 25. Yeah, he's getting his par there. Great putt, Cyrus. Yep, that's a good one. Get the stroke on almost everybody there. And everybody else is just going to tap in for their their bogey fours. Yeah, I would I would say that this this hole is going to be a rare birdie, and no matter who's there. So if you're taking pars, you're taking strokes on folks. So like Cyrus right there taking a stroke on the card. Um, we'll see the whole average here. Yeah, three point eight two. Yep. There so, was what six pars. Six pars, and thank you to Dayton Disc Golf for yeah. sponsoring that hole. And here, here's a list of all the leagues Sunday through Friday. So we got hole four here coming in at five oh four. It's a tight tunnel with a OB Creek, probably three fifty down. Yep, this is a good hole. You have the creek that's down there, so if you go too far forward, you can't go out of bounds. Cyrus threw on the forehand here, and he didn't get it straight enough. It, it tailed off a little early. He, he probably wanted to push that a little more forward before it started moving right. That creek there, though, makes you think about it, because you don't want to juice it too far, because then you're going to be in a tough spot trying to pitch up for your four. It looks like Ian had a good drive there. Might be a little ceiling, low ceiling on that shot. second shot. Bart, what are we throwing here? I'm throwing a Glow MD3, just trying to keep it nice and straight with just a slight turnover. Oh, there's the turn. Wow, you really got a hold of that one. Yep. And as you can see, got got too much on it. Just uh, going to that OB Creek. Yep, it just trickled in. It was a little too, uh, little too much power on it. Jerry also looking pretty good here, but turned over just a little too much and catches something at the end. It might have been a lucky tree to hit. Could have went out of bounds. Um, it had had good ceiling on it. Maybe would have made it across. Yeah, and if you're off the fairway here, like you see, it's it's going to be very difficult because. It's already a difficult shot, even if you land here perfectly in the fairway, like you see where Jerry's at. That's a tight gap he just hit there. That was a good shot by Jerry, leaving him about a 15 to 20 footer. Ian's disc was able to put the brakes on right before the out of bounds. There's that quake again. Just running the basket as always. Nice approach. I was just seeing if the spotters saw if I hit the other side and rolled back or if I just went in from the back side. Cyrus is ready to go. Just oh, caught, catching some debris there. Looks like he's gonna have a 20 to 25 foot putt there, tester for par. Yep. And here, this is me throwing my sensei. Just trying to keep it nice and smooth. Uh, behind that green, it does have a little runaway there, as you can see, can lead you to from a 15 footer to an easy circle edge putt. Cyrus left it a low, just again. Just a bit short there. It was good effort. And Jeremiah must have been outside the circle. Yeah, a little high there. Tester on the comeback here. And it was a good putt. Nice putt. He's able to save his uh, par four there. Not really happy with the, the par there, but it's better than a bogey. Big tapping out by four. That should be formalities. Ian's gonna get the 33 here. That's a good hole, Ian. Yeah, on, on uh, the theme of this course seems to be you really want to get the birdies on the par fours. Uh, some of the par threes are a little bit more challenging. 
and you really want to hit some of these par fours. You can string a couple of them together. So we had two pars, one bogey, and a birdie. So that's pretty average for a card. We had seven birdies on the hole and just average just above par. Yeah. As you see, that creek probably came into play for a lot of them. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Stevie Dyes. You never had Steve die your disc, you're missing out. Man does fantastic work. Yep, really good job. We're going to hole five here. It's 437 feet downhill, par three. It's a really defined shot. You got to keep it low. It's real, just, yeah. just like that. that really scenic hole. Shot. Probably one of the signature holes here. That's a great shot. Yeah, you see Ian throwing the forehand there, and that's kind of the safe play. Where it opens up after the tunnel, and you're able to dump out. That's a backhand by Bart, MD3, I'm guessing. Yep, trying to throw the MD3. And it, it actually was tracking towards the basket and caught some of those late finger branches and just dropped me into circle two. Jeremiah going with the rock here. Looks like he's liked your line, taking a little number off of it. Oh, this is going... Oh, did he juice it? A little deep, 437 yeah. with a rock. But that's easy to do with the downhill. like Because all you're really focused on is just trying to clear the gap and clear the hill. You see Cyrus putting it lower, and that's more of the uh, correct height that you want. Now, there is trouble right there. That road is OB. Yep, and uh, he was fortunate enough to land short ooh. of that OB. So he'll have a nice and easy approach to get his par three. Yeah, that... I, Take a three on this hole any day of the week. It, that road really likes to attract the disc. Oh. It was a circle two effort there for me, just not high enough to um, get it over the front edge. As everyone would say, that normal basket, that would go in. Uh, it doesn't matter, though. <laughs> you're putting on. Whatever you're putting on, you got to put it in the basket. That's right. We got Jerry, also I think from Circle 2. Oh, what a putt. And he's able to sneak it in right over the That's, top. That can be a tough putt back there. I know from experience, when you get back there, those low branches, they like to dangle in. That's a good focused putt by Jerry right there, yeah. taking the birdie. Yeah, and there's not going to be, I don't think there's going to be a lot of birdies on this hole. I would. I know there's one more. I had one person on my card get it. Nice. With I know. a putter. Nice. Yeah, five and six, as you guys will see at the next hole, are two par threes, and you're pretty excited if you can birdie one of them, um, if not both of them. Yeah, so we got one birdie and three pars. Yeah, I would say what Jerry's at one down, Ian's at one down. Not a great start, but not a bad start. You want to start out under par and just hold on for life. Yep. So the... Uh, Average there was right around 3, 3.05. Um, that's exactly how I thought it was going to play Harley and Jerry with mm -hmm. the birdies. Thank you to Kaylee Drostek for sponsoring that hole. We got hole six here coming in at 339 feet. Probably your most picturesque shot you can throw. I mean, look at the tunnel. It's right there. All the way at the end of the tunnel is the basket. Jerry's throwing something with a little bit of flip to it. I think it's... I know it's a driver. I think it's like maybe a TL or Sidewinder. He likes the road runner. Oh, road runner. Yeah. It could be a road he runner. He threw it really well down, down the tunnel. I think he's in circle one there. And we got Ian going with the forehand. And I think he sawed it off a little. Yeah, he, he didn't get the flip on it that he wanted to. Or actually he did, but he released it a little right, I think, and it hit the right side trees. All right, what are you throwing? I'm trying to get an MD3, and I did the exact opposite. I'm trying to flip something up, and instead of throwing it right down the tunnel, I was trying to flip it from the left side. And Looks like it had some good fight on it, though. It got through a little bit. This is a hole made for Cyrus. It's looking good. He turned it a little bit. Oh, catches that last tree. Yep. And say he doesn't even know that tree's there. So, yeah, it's difficult to keep the disc on a, on a rope 330 feet like that without any you know left or right play. Ian just quaking it up again next to the basket. I told you guys he loves to throw that disc. We got Cyrus. Also really nice approach right next to the basket. We got Bart a little bit from the rough. It can get tight over there. That looks like a great shot. Yep, it just I kept it a little shorter because of the line that I had there, but I'm trusting myself to make that putt. Oh, Cyrus is putting first. Jerry must have really piped that. Yep, nice cleanup three. I'm going to be next. Hoping to knock this one down. Not really a hole that you want to take a four on. 
That's a good putt. Solid putt. Uphill, high basket. Right in the middle of the chains. Good putt. Ooh. There's Jerry. Wow, what a drive. Yeah, it's to get five and six is, is super bonus. Uh, that's I don't think that's gonna happen very often. Yeah, that's really good. So we got one birdie and three pars on the cool. I would say that's pretty good. I mean, probably four or five birdies if I had to guess. Maybe not. I'm going to guess, I think, two or three. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. Yep, two birdies. Tyler Barczyk. Good shot. Yep. Average 3.14. As you can tell, there is a little trouble on that hole if you don't hit an early tree. Yep. Thanks to Michelle Cruz Photography for the whole sponsorship. And we're moving on to... Hole seven. Seven, 570 feet. We got a couple of par fours here in a row, and you really want to start to attack here. Yep, where that group of trees is, there's a creek that plays OB just beyond it that makes you actually cut this hole into two instead of blasting a driver and then another short approach. It makes you think about your upshot. Yep. Jerry turned that over. I know that's not exactly where he wants to be. You want to be just perfectly straight ahead of the, both the tee pads where you see the clearing and the trees. So Ian's changing it up. Yep. Go forehand. Forehand to backhand. Same I, disc. I, li I like the play. Just a little flex on it. Yeah, he can throw these forehands pretty well. He can get them turned over um, and usually settling right where he wants. Yep. And that'll use the hill. It should get a little rolled. Probably can't see it. But yeah, I don't think he got as much turn as he was hoping for, and he kind of stayed in that area right where Jerry was at. What are you throwing? Uh, I, I'm a little upset on the last couple holes, so I'm throwing a DD3 here, just uh -oh. trying to clear the clear the creek. Uh-oh, it's leaking a little left. Yeah, that's that's a, more, a little more left than, than what you want. There, there is some OB left when you get out into the field. So there's OB on the driving path up on the right, and on the left, the uh, fields play OB. Yeah. So it makes it a real tunnel. You can see here, if you turn over that drive, um, you kind of have a little bit more to contend with. No, no, no. Oh, I better get down. Do that. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be in bounds. I actually think it might have stayed in bounds, but he definitely, he definitely wow. wanted to put it in the basket from there. Let's see. Yeah, he got the turn on it. He's going to use the side of the hill. Right. Oh, we almost threw it in. Great shot. Great shot. Yeah, really good forehand from there. We got Jerry also looking at. Uh, same gap, you know, same kind of shot, just a forehand. The basket sits in like kind of a divot inside of that hill, so if you can kind of dunk it right into that divot, it should stay. Kind of gets a bounce and a roll towards it just like that. Yep. Yeah. Looks like he stayed up, didn't yep. roll down. All right, uh, this is Bart we're looking at. Somewhere in these woods, up oh, there he is. Yeah, I made it past the creek. Um, so I actually have a routine little putter shot. Should Should be able to get it up and down here. Throw my it, link. Giving it a run, maybe? Yeah, I just I wasn't planning on it, but. Ooh, that's a scary run. Cyrus so must have stayed in bounds. There's a good just clean up for a birdie. Yep, taking my three. Cyrus for poor. And the rest of these guys Jeez. will tap it in their birdies. Yeah, this is one hole you really want to get. I don't think it's really that tough of a par four but it requires a great tee shot to leave you with something. A great tee shot yeah, and a great up shot too because it can easily go down the hill to the left there if you saw it off and leave you with a long putt that you don't want. So um, oh. Cyrus did go out of bounds. So right now we got Jeremiah at three down, Bart at one, Cyrus at plus one, and Ian at two. Those are some solid scores. Yeah. It actually averaged below par, 3.91. Um, and you know, I think it's a pretty, pretty soft par four. Yeah. Shout out to Buckeye Burgers sponsoring hole seven. We got hole eight here. It's one of my favorites. Requires a uh, 628 feet par four. Requi requires a shot that lands in the right spot. You just want to be straight again. Yeah. You don't want to be too far left because it's going to cut down your angle. You see, Jerry's telling us this to get down here, and I don't think it's a horrible spot. No, I should leave him another hyzer straight to the basket. This is a really nice play uh, because you can throw a nice like a spike or a flat shot and get it to just to land before the road, which will set you up for your second shot really nicely, and you know that's good. Yeah, doesn't even bring in that ob or not ob that natural ob on your left. Yeah. And we'll 
throwing a PD here, just trying to get it to go flat right up on this road. Oh, that looks mashed. And unfortunately, it just landed Ooh, flat wow. on the road and was about two yeah. inches from coming back in bounds. <laughs> That's just unlucky. Yep. I was counting on the skip there, and I didn't get it. Cyrus throwing a little flex shot here, asking for it to come back, and his disc lands on a hyzer, so he's going to get the skip back in bounds. Now, this is a little tricky of a shot here with that being up on that top yep. plateau. Looks like you went PD again. Yeah, I tried to. I really tried to attack the basket, but it's, that's difficult from there. All right, sorry, or the Ian here. Sorry, got a uh, skip shot to the basket. We're looking like. This... Yeah, it looks like he pushed it a little straight. You kind of want to be coming in a little hotter than that because the basket does kind of hook a little bit to the left. This looks a little better. Did he hit that branch? Did he get on it? I think he might have hit the branch. And you can see with the right hand backhand off the tee, if you go too far to the left, you have a very difficult shot. I got Jerry throwing a roller, using the hill. Yep. There it comes down. Yeah, it definitely came out a little bit more right than he wanted, and he got a little got a little nervous there because it kind of headed towards the out of bounds. You can see Bart here with the basket, probably just pitching up here. It, that green tends to roll away to the left. That hill, you can't really tell here, but it goes down a good ways. And you can leave yourself with another 25, 30 footer on a comeback if you don't play it right. Yep, there's Cyrus with the little approach shot and everybody's just gonna be approaching yeah. because it's you can't run this. Like even this is a very scary putt, but he's got the big gap here. Oof. And, yeah. you, don't, you know he was definitely trying to give it a soft little run there. Yeah. Cyrus here for par, I believe, with a 15-20 footer. There it is. But that should just be tap-ins here. Oh, no, the bar's got a little bit of meat. So we got about another 15 footer. Yes, sir. So our card is going to walk away. No birdies on this hole. It's a tough hole. It's, it requires two great shots to... To have a putt. Yep. So. There you go. I myself with the bogey there, and the rest of the car taking the par four, moving me to even. Everybody else stays the same. The whole average over par. You know what's mm -hmm. expected? Four point two three. Just uh, three birdies. And thank you to Christine Jennings for sponsoring that hole. If you're in search of a home in the Dayton area, make sure to call her up. All right, hole nine, 627 feet, another par four, really requiring a great shot off the tee. You just want to kind of push it straight again. Yep, and this is actually looking really nicely oh. done. Oh. He hits the tree, send it, sending him into bogey land, but he gets another nice kick and stays on the edge. Yeah, I can't tell you guys. Speaking from experience, going, what? And, oh, talk about and this. Ian did oh, the exact God. same thing, but he hit the first yeah, available, and it was sending him probably well into the left rough, and he got another kick, and it kept him in the fairway. It could take you three shots just to get out of those woods on the left. Yeah. So those guys definitely saved some strokes there. And that's a be beautiful shot by Cyrus there. That's exactly what you want. And I'm throwing a S-line PD here, just trying to keep it straight. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's a great shot. That's prime time right there. Gonna have a nice backhand skip shot to the basket. We got Ian here, probably just trying to pitch over this little, not a creek, but hill. Yep, and this is good angle here, and the disc's gonna land flat, and he's gonna put it, you know, just a little bit further than where you want your first shot to land. Yeah, you should be able to see the basket from right about there. Yep. Jerry also has got this tree right in his face. It's going roller. But he says, I don't care. I'm throwing a roller. Mm. That's an interesting yeah, I don't think it was going to get to the basket. It might have gotten him a little bit more distance if it finished. Yeah, because there is OB straight long of the basket that comes into play. So yeah. that's... Yeah. And that's just a little high and a little tight. It's this. You really have to bite off a lot off the tee in order to get your birdie three here. Like, even I am not far enough. I don't think I'm throwing a forehand. And I put some steam on it, but I still don't think it had enough uh, 
uh, left to right movement to they be could, in the vicinity for a bird. I could have tested the OB long. Yeah. Ian, oh, that's a great shot by yeah. Ian. Yeah. He goes short side. It's difficult to go through there. Those trees are, are very tight. This just shows you how far that basket is tucked to the right because you can see where Jerry and Ian were was still somewhat in the middle of the fairway. See? Exactly. And you have that OB that he's heading towards right now, um, <laughs> that you, the long grass, and you also have the road that's past the basket. That should be right underneath it. Just a little short there, a little nervous on that upshot. Ian for his par. Good effort there. Didn't, didn't get it, didn't just get the height that he wanted. This is Jeremiah for his par. Yep. That's a good putt. Yep, really good stroke there. Was able to get the par there. I don't, I don't think there's going to be too many birdies on this one again. Two or three maybe. Yeah, I think if you take if you take the birdie on this hole, you're taking strokes on people. So yeah, pars are not bad on this hole. Like especially with a couple of these guys hitting trees, could have kicked in real hard. They could be shooting six and sevens instead. They're taking fours and fives. Exactly. There's a good putt, and I will be last to tap in for. My par four. And there it is. So it should be three pars and a uh, bogey. Yep. Yep, Ian took the, took the bogey there for one too many tree hits. Moving him back to one under. And we are through nine. Through nine there. Got, uh, Harley Payne. Well... That doesn't mean you have to throw it far off the tee. I don't know what else I can say. <laughs> Average 4.59, um, and thanks to Town Church for sponsoring that hole. And like Tony said, that wraps up the front nine. We will see you guys on the back nine. Okay, cool. Not too bad. Do you want a beverage break? I got one right behind.